I'm Peter, and this is my story of my involvement in amateur television during the 1970s, before colour. But firstly, a little history. Around the 1930s, a number of individuals and organisations became involved in transmitting images via wireless. One such person was Gil Miles, 3II. He was involved with television and radio laboratories, and in January 1929, he transmitted pictures via 3UZ. Gil moved to Tasmania, became VK7KQ, and uh, was the secretary, I believe, of the Tasmanian division for some time. So he was still an active amateur. Later he moved to Sydney and became VK2KI. There were other notable experimenters during that time. One in particular was Tom Elliott, VK4 Charlie Mike in Brisbane. Tom transmitted pictures from the old windmill tower in Brisbane and uh, used the Baird system. The government, however, was not very happy about uh, allowing television to start commercially in the country, and they had placed bans on the importation of television equipment. I think this were, there were economic reasons for this. However, when the Olympic Games were mooted for 1956, uh, they opened the regulations up to allow the importation of cameras and other items of equipment uh, from the UK and other places. Now, Len Moncur, VK3LN, the father of Rex, and Jeff Hughes, VK3AUX, discovered this loophole and managed to obtain two camera tubes from the United States during that short window which was open to allow the importation of camera equipment. More about them later. Eric Cornelius, VK6EC, published a number of significant articles about television in Amateur Radio magazine over a number of months, uh, starting, I think, in the mid-50s or the early 50s. And then uh, we move into the time when uh, my story really commences, and that's in the nine, early 1970s. Equipment, television equipment became much easier to obtain, and it was relatively easy to uh, get operational. Oh, and somewhere in the middle there was a, a resurgence in interest in the Baird system when pictures were transmitted between VK3 and VK5. So this is the story of my journey, and uh, it unfortunately includes many fa fairly poor pictures because we took photographs off the screen uh, of the, the first events and there were <laughs> very uh, rarely were there photographs of the high quality uh, or higher quality uh, images. However, this is the story from my records. During the 70s, some television camera heads became available. They were imported by the government for a particular project, but uh, this project was cancelled and the heads sat around for a long time. They were in fact German Fernsay camera heads and they were nothing more than uh, a camera head about the size of a, of a paint tin. As you can see it's almost uh, uh, cylindrical in shape. It, can, it included a, a um, scanning set of scanning coils for a three quarter inch uh, Vidicon and two valve preamplifiers, and that was it. You had to fit your own lenses, you had to make your own camera control unit and sync pulse generators. I became involved because uh, uh, two or three other people had found out about these cameras and had obtained some, and uh, they wanted some information on how to transmit on 70 centimeters. None of them had very much experience uh, up on those frequencies, whereas I had. And so I was approached, the deal being that uh, they would um, uh, help me out with a camera head uh, if I could show them how to build a transmitter or what to, to do to get a signal on the air. 
and on the right hand side of the screen you can see my shack during the 19, early 1970s. The shack was basically a 6 metre AM, 2 metre AM, a bit of 2 metres FM and 70 centimetre AM station. Antennas were 13 element Yagis uh, at about uh, 30 feet, 10 metres or thereabouts. And most of the equipment was homemade, as you can see in that uh, photograph there. The transmitter for 70 centimetres was based on a design in the RSGB manual, except uh, their design had a QQEO 320. I decided to move up to a, a more powerful tube, a QQEO 640, which I think I managed to get about 60 watts out of um, quite successfully, and it, it worked really well. Not long after I first built the unit, I had it running for a while, uh, soaking on transmit, and uh, uh, all of a sudden I could smell some smoke. The design called for dielectric tuning on the end of the plate lines. You can see the end of the QQEO 640 and uh, the plate lines and uh, the dielectric tuning. Well, what had happened there was uh, I had picked the wrong dielectric, hadn't I? and uh, it wanted to cook like a pie in a microwave oven and got to the stage where the pie caught on fire. <laughs> so anyway, we corrected that, used some better quality dielectric. Also, the other thing for the amateur television side of things I, was to include a modulator, and you can see the red cross there over the grid resistance. That was the point where the modulator was uh, installed. You had to have permits to transmit on amateur television, and this is an excerpt from AR, Amateur Radio Magazine, in January 1958. So you can see back then there were quite a few people becoming interested in television. Uh, how many were actually transmitting, I do not know. Uh, I know there was activity in New South Wales, and I know that there was a little bit of experimental activity in Victoria. But as I said, it was necessary to have a permit to transmit television. You had to have the stroke T if you were going to go on the air. So we went through all the, uh, uh, the necessaries to uh, obtain a new license. I was first licensed in 1962, and you can see that this license here on the right-hand side was issued um, to allow for the transmission of television. And here we are with our very first signal on the air, taken uh, in Sunbury, a bit f uh, a few kilometres away from my place. Not very good, but it was on the air, and there was great excitement indeed. The, I turned the camera around from my caption card onto myself, and uh, yeah, a bit of a wavy-looking picture there, but uh, I sort of looked a bit like that in those days. As I mentioned, one had to build the camera control unit and sync pulse generator and obtain a three-quarter inch Vidicon. Uh, we managed to get a second-hand Vidicon without too much trouble. Had to mount a lens on the front of the, uh, the camera uh, head and, uh, and make the camera control unit and sync pulse generator. That's roughly the block diagram of it. On the right-hand side is the the camera and the necessary connections for the deflection yokes and uh, the, um, the video out on the blanking and uh, the rest of it is really the, uh, a, di a block diagram showing how the sync pulses were generated and, uh, and uh, amplified etc. Later I built a transmitter just dedicated for television and uh, that's the complete transmitter there with a uh, a, a um, intercarrier sound generator. The transmitter this time used the QQEO 320 uh, and a Veractor multiplier which you can just see the box on the left hand end of the uh, aluminium uh, final um, cavity at the, uh, at the back of the transmitter. And here's the circuit for the modulator which I used on both transmitters. Uh, fairly straightforward, just a couple of transistors, it seemed to work okay. Uh, 